Hi there, so welcome to the first tutorial of Star Wars Modeling. So you have it located here in advanced physics turbulence flat plate. So this is a, a classical validation case in CFD turbulence modeling. So basically imagine a flat plate and recall that we saw the theory about this Y plus profile u plus y plus profile so see that here we're plotting the solution for different cases so see that what happens when we are using a turbulence models remember that we have a theoretical profile so this green line and the other one okay the the blue one so see that using the turbulence model all these ones they are kind of following with that profile okay but then look at what happens when i run the simulation using laminar model see that this is a turbulence case and running is you have a good mesh should do the blending and follow this profile okay remember that this has been widely validated okay this is one of the most validated correlations in, in turbulence modeling cfd and in general in physics now so it's very well known that it should blend here but the see that due to the fat that we're not using turbulence model or our me mesh is not fine enough to resolve well the flow is not blending and it's keeping the solution here the laminar profile so then when you use the turbulence model in this case k omega high ray low ray width or without without ball function and spiral matters see that different profiles and what is interesting is also see that remember that when you use wall functions high ray you are putting less cells. So see that in this case, the white plus in the first cell, it was something about 200. So you are saving a lot of cells, okay? And just to show you that better, again, as you go to to, to, to a website here where we have this Torrance model and it's a whole semester on course, but I just want to show you this here. See that th these two meshes, the only difference is that in this one we have the boundary layer mesh. And now this is a mesh done with Snappy, probably you recognize the structure. The only difference that we have here is the boundary layer, the inflation layer. And see the difference. No boundary layer mesh, boundary layer mesh. So that makes a difference. It's almost twice. Okay, we go for almost six, 60 million cells to 120 million cells. Okay, so that's why we want to use wall functions the wall functions are very reliable okay they have the imitation but let's say most of the cases they perform very well but you need to have a good mesh okay so that's why we want to use wall functions so see that here we compare different cases and all of them are, are solving well now the boundary layer but we're going to see also how to set up boundary conditions okay so some guidelines here. Okay, so we're going to use simple phone, okay, but also you can extend this case and use pimple phone, whatever, okay. And remember that you set the turbulence models in, in, in the folder constant momentum transport, you set it here. So we're going to use the K omega SST, two variants, high re and low re means with wall functions or with no wall functions. And just a reminder in this table, so if you're taking the wall function approach, this is how you set up boundary conditions. We're going to see it. And then if you took the result, if you take the resolve approach, you set it like this. So in this case, let's set up also the initial values using a 1% turbulence intensity and viscosity uh, ratio equal, equal to one. Okay, so just to show you that you go into your case directory, flat plate, and see that you have different cases, okay? So this is high ray wall functions, wall resolving. The, this one is no turbulence model, already run here, uh, Spala Almaras, okay? So you can see also how to do this without Spala Almaras. So I will enter in this one, high ray, just to show you. See that we have the K omega first, okay? Let me open, let me go. I read and let me do some cleaning here. Okay, so I'm going to run this one because it's relatively fast. So see that as you go momentum transport, these two dictionaries, okay? So let's revisit this. So transport properties, you set your transport properties to reach a range of, I think it was 1 million that we put in the slides. Let me, I don't recall the Reynolds. Yeah, probably something about 1 million. I don't recall, you can compute it, okay? or 6 million probably, 6.3. Okay, it's a relative high, okay? Remember it is incompressible, so you can use dynamic similarity. And here you have 
your uh let me raise this one we don't need your boundary conditions so ump is standard boundary conditions nothing to comment here and these three new ones here are related to the turbulence quantities see k omega and remember nut is the turbulent viscosity that is computed for k and omega okay so if we open this okay and let me generate the mesh let me go here it say you have the typical scripts mesh okay i go here so this is the domain and this is the, do the mesh so basically what we have here and let me erase there so what we have here inlet outlet this is the wall and this here we have a slip wall okay i put it as a symmetry where you can put a slip so what is happening is that the flow enters then it will find this wall and you are going to see the boundary layer develop in there okay so that is the case so you can see that we need to define inlet boundary conditions for the trolling quantity but also for ump but you know how to set up that one and not go into details at the outlet okay and this is our mesh okay this is the wall function mesh but now let me open the other mesh so you can see the difference between going to resolve in, into res be between resolving the boundary layer and modeling okay let me link this with this okay now this Okay. right click link camera link it with this one okay i don't want to see it. i want to see this one and also here okay and okay so look at this the different Uh, okay here left to my left wall modeling wall resolving okay so this is the difference so now imagine 3d cases it's as you show you in the slides in the as i show you also imagine that you are running on a steady and remember that is you the cfl number depends on the minimum in the cell distance so this one will translate for a given cfl number will translate to a very small time step okay so that is the idea of using wall function so let's take a look at the at the boundary condition so see that in every patch that it exists okay we have commented that in the constant polymesh boundary you have the names and let me go and open that because i want to stress that in turbulence modeling the walls needs to be defined as a wall okay so see that if you don't if you put it as a patch you are not going to be able to use wall functions okay so walls where you actually will have the boundary layer they need to be wall here and that will enable now to use wall functions and compute the y plus in those in, in those sur surface boundaries so let's go to case so see that we have inlet top outlet slip surface okay and see that patch 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 wall so as you go for instance you you have the inlet we have the velocity okay you know the lens and for that you can compute your range of estimate so see top zero gradient outlet zero gradient slip i put it slip okay but you can use symmetry as well and then bottom surface zero 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 the p is standard setup fix at the outlet the the pressure and that's all but now we go to k and see that we have this value here so remember in this slides you you have a, a correlations but also here and to show you in our website also here we put we we have this calculator to compute those values so we're using similar correlations okay and just to show you how to use this so my free stream value is one okay my ba -ba 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 -ba, edit viscosity if I were, it was zero 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 two something like this okay uh the reference length okay tu okay tu we say that we want turbulence intensity of one and edit viscosity radio ratio of one 
Okay, so it's this one is or zero to ten. Okay, let me check. Um, two ten minus seven. Okay, so it's two. Okay, and then say that I want to compute. Okay, on this one. Okay, using turbulence intensity, you press compute. And there you go, you have the quantities here, okay? So this calculator, you, you have it in our website here, you have go uh, software web tool, but it's, we're using the same correlation. So, so you click here, you will see the correlations that we're using to compute that, okay? But see that it's telling me that K is 0 0.0015. You have that value that you see here is coming from there, okay? And then you have for omega 750 that probably think okay 750 and then look at, at the walls we are putting these values okay and that's all as we follow, just follow the gu guidelines that you have here and that's all okay this is how you set up bundle conditions and this setup that you have here will be the same for world resolving and world modeling this is another advantage of this k omega sst okay that there are no differences between the approach that you use instead there are some other models that you will need to change something so using these boundary conditions we're, we are ready to run okay and this is the world modeling and let me go to the low rate here and by the way, as you enter into NUT, I forgot, see that you see here calculated. Calculated means that it's computed from K and Omega. And we know that how it's computed, you just go back in this dice and you will see the correlation. So inlet, tot, outlet are, is computed from K and Omega. And in the bottom, you put a wall function for NUT. Okay, so here you put this one so this is the one the the, the continuous wall function or the y plus insensitive okay so this is a standard you always leave it like that so the, this new file leave it always like this in linux and outlet pull put put the calculate it where you have walls put this wall function and then you have the other constraint patches if you have those that's all okay this is how you set up your turbulent case the same will, will be in the other case okay the other case corresponds to the world resolver so see that instead of using the uh, <coughs> here the this one we're using the k load this is something specific for world resolving but also you can use the kq again if you want to know what is this you have the phone info and there you have the information okay so we use that for the wall resolving, then for omega. Okay, omega, the wall is larger. See that this is larger because the distance is much, much smaller. So I measure that distance, I know that distance, and I put this value here, okay? However, also probably you, you can also run with 750 there, but you will see that the convergence rate will be slower. So it's a good idea to get a good estimate for that quantity. And for nudes, see that the setup is the same. Okay, so we see this is a set of boundary conditions, and now if we go to SV system, the only new stuff that we have to do here is SV schemes. So remember that you are solving new equations for k and omega. New tilde, I leave it there, but new tilde is used for the spalar matters. This term here, this is related to the Reynolds stresses. Okay, so you always see this one, and you you wonder what is this? It's just the Reynolds stress that you have in your solvable equation. So see that this is the standard setup that I always recommend. Probably here I put corrected because it's a very good mesh, but it's better to put it limited 0 0.5. SV solutions. Same idea, okay, every variable that exists, so see k and omega, use this method, and using the consistent, that I always recommend to use consistent, and on the relax. So in this case, the consistent with 0 0.9, okay, consistent is a, a steady 0 0.9 for all variables, it is okay. So this is how you run turbulence simulation, okay, then you go and control D, then you put your traditional function object, so see that k omega nut and so on and this is important one so what you're running this one is going to report the y plus minimum maximum and average value but also you will be able to visualize that quantity okay so let's run this this simulation okay 
run and bum 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 will be run all. So what what is running? So see that is standard way. Okay, nothing changed at the beginning. Probably is going to is going to show you know some information about okay you are using this terminus model with these constants and that's all. See that everything perfect. Okay, so it will run to Salson iteration. What is running? I will go back to to the, I will go to the other case that I already ran. And let's visualize the solution. Okay, so I will launch Paraphon. Remember all the time that you see in the directory is a part of you folder it means that there you have an state that you can open so just to show you how to compute also that profile okay okay so remember that you have that theoretical profile so this is the this is the solution see what you have okay so this is the flat play and see that this is your boundary layer okay so this is your actors solution so this is what we're computing simply as it is and to plot this graph it okay so you recall from from this slides this one that independently of the application that you are doing is you sample that okay where the flow is fully developed you should you should be able to reproduce this this profile so here you see the steps when you open this state in part of you you will see the the steps how to do it but basically remember it's relatively easy so what you're going to do is allocation in your wall, sample shear stress there, and then you have the velocity along this line. This line has to be normal to the wall, so you can have curvature. And then you have the correlations and you plot it like this. So see that our results in OpenFun is this one, the black line. And see that it corresponds, it is a good agreement here, here the green curve, the log. The, the log low, this is the buffer layer, this is where we have disagreement, this is difficult to <clears throat> to match. And then what you see here now, this means that you are outside of the effect of the boundary layer. Okay, so this is the the defect the defect layer, sometimes they call it the defect wake. Okay, so this is outside of the boundary layer. So see that this is a, a way to validate, you no, know? it's a it's very basic, but I always like to do it. Now when I, I, I I'm in doubt of my simulation and if I resolve them well the flow at the wall, I plot this one and it's, if I get this plot, I know that everything, it is okay. So this is, here you have all the steps, no? In the workflow, you can try to reproduce this, but it works in the same way. It doesn't matter your application or the mesh or is your R wall resolve well, wall model. It. So here, see that it's running, okay, it's done. So just to show you also a few things about run solver, this is great. So see that it runs the solver, then it runs post-process to compute the wall shear stress. So remember that wall shear stress is not computed by default. In this case, we're computing this after the a posteriori, but also you can put your function object to compute it, okay? In this case, I decided to do it a posteriori. Here, post-process, we're doing some sampling, okay? So you can check that one. So this sampling is done to extract information because then also you have here a Python script. So in this Python script, and just to show you, so, so it will run the sampling and then when you enter in the folder Python and you run Python 3, Python script. We'll do the same plotting as you have, as I just show you in the in part of you. Okay, and it will generate the JPEG files and here you have the solution. So for this case, see that these are the theoretical profiles. So see that you can see in the in the script how to generate those profiles. I'm not going into details. Let me open it here so you can try to read it. As you said, remember that I try to overcomplicate things. Okay, so probably it's clear to understand in part of you. Then in this figure, see that we have the theoretical profile, the orange and the blue one, and then we have the solution. So the solution for this current case is the red one. Okay, then this one that you see here, okay, this one, it is an old solution. It's a wrong solution. See what happens when you use the wrong wall functions, the run setup. So you are converging to a solution, but it is not right. And when this profile is below the, 
the orange line it means that you are over predicting you are generating too much uh wall shear stress instead when it's here in this region closer to this laminar profile you are under predicting and by the way here we have uh, the green line is the, is, is the solution for an, another solver using another Reynolds double it doesn't matter see that when you normalize everything okay you can compare cases so you should always get something like this so this is the case in wall modeling the same we can do the same as you go to the k omega low red you have the python script okay and if you run it it will read you need to do the sampling that everything is done already in the script it will read the files and see that it's going to generate your jpegs here okay so this is and see that here again i'm putting this is an old solution okay this is the one using the wrong wall function so see what happens so you have to be very careful you need to put the right values and this is where our actual solution okay now our actual solution see that resolve very well the log low then you have the buffer layer okay this one nobody knows what is happening and then you go to the viscous layer and you resolve that so if i go back here to show so see the difference when you plot buses then okay you have that one wall modeling and wall resolving okay and remember here everything below this point has been modeled and we know that we have those correlations that have been validated so basically everything has to be modeled using correlation so within the turbulence model we're putting another turbulence model instead here you resolve all the boundary layers so this will be let's say the best approach is you want accurate prediction of forces or heat transfer rate however it is expensive so most of the time uh, wall functions they work fine they do have limitations wall functions the stuff like is you have uh, massive separation separated flow it is not recommended to use wall functions it's better to use wall resolver again if you want to learn more about that uh, i invite you here to to the website and there are different no, mo, uh, lectures here so you can go to the one in wall functions and, and we talk about all the limitations because they have many limitations okay and limit uh, limitations the the applicability okay so we talk about that also you will see there in the slides you have the derivation of the less equations derivation of runs equations if you want to see so for instance here you will have the k epsilon model from where that k equation come in the epsilon equation also the derivation of the the complete procedure now to to derive the Ryan's equations and so on okay uh so that's all let's say that's all for this case it's a very nice case okay it seems very simple but this is the first validation case that you are going to do in Torrance modeling so if you don't manage to get this okay you need to to understand better how things work so you have it here k omega ssd the one that i recommended and this is your template so you have here wall functions, wall modeling, and then here you have the case set up for a spiral almaras. Uh, here you have no turbulence model, so as you run this case and then you plot the profile, you will see that, and actually I already have the solution there. So just to show you. So if I go Python 3, Python is uh, Python 3 and script 1 open here okay and see that what is happening is see the red one the red line is following the viscous uh, the viscous correlation so this flow is truly turbulent and it should do this blending boom and follow the green one but it's not doing that one it's keeping in the lamina so it is an under predicting everything so you are getting a solution but it's the wrong one so this is the effect of the turbulence model okay is this extra ingredient just to match 
the, the, the turbulent solution. So you can run laminar and you can get this result, but you will need to use an extremely large mesh, a stuff about 500 millions, okay? So that's why we put these turbulence models into action and we develop. It's an, it is an area of active development, by the way. It's still today, new ideas, new models is still emerging. Okay, so that's all for this case. Feel free to pay with all the to play with all the auctions. Okay, you have there the case ready to go. Change wonder condition is the one you try to set up the K epsilon model as an exercise, and then we can meet in the in the Q and A sessions and we see if you did it right or if you are having problems. So everything is ready to go. All the scripts to do the sample to run the Python script. Remember, you need unit python tree so that's all for your for this case thank you for your attention see you in the next tutorial next and final tutorial of turbulence bye